Yeah, I was going to try and do uh, the standing desk, but it just it blocks like your view of the board entirely. Uh, and I never, I'm never satisfied that I can work at the keyboard quite with the right height. There it just doesn't doesn't work. Maybe I haven't tried hard enough. I don't know. But uh, so yeah, I'm going with the uh, with the sitting, which I default to so far. So today I actually had a chance uh, to attend the 206 classes this morning, nine o'clock and 10:30, and and we've we've come a long way. That was. That was my one of my impressions. I, I, I really respect the work that they do, the professors do there. And uh, I know it's a different sample. Like you all are here, you picked this class, you didn't, you either picked the major as required for your major, like accounting, or you've gone out of your way to pick the class. Whereas anybody in the business school is in 205 and 206. So uh there's a different level of commitment to the topic or interest in the topic or interest in the, the adjacent topics. And so I appreciate uh, the things that, that when I take them for granted, I, I, I'm often rewarded because you know them and you're, you're disciplined in doing certain things that, that, that perhaps are, are harder to come by when you're just starting out and you're in 205 or 206. So, so I'm, I'm trying to give you a pat on the back. It's not coming through very, very clearly. I, I, I appreciate I, I, you're a valued member of this team, is what I'm saying in, in short order. There you go. So I have some requests for a few specific questions. I think they all were 5-2, but we can go over 5-1 and 5-2 today and, and to our heart's content. And I, I, I told these two people that he had emailed me, I'll go over those at the beginning of class, uh, the video, you know, they're... they're um, so when they're trying to review it, they can, they can look at it. And then we have another, one of the requests so far. And then, of course, we know we'll, we'll do even more requests and, and see if there's any area that I, I have in the back of my head of, oh, you know what, I think I'm, I need to hit this a little harder or, or go over this particular piece again. I, I very briefly on Monday talked about 5-2, and it's a small section that elaborates into 10 questions on a quiz that are potentially many lines in Excel each question. So... There's elaboration that might need to happen on the subject matter itself. <clears throat> well, let's just start in these questions. I've got, I pulled down the screenshot images here. Uh, so here we have a, at least a portion of the, this question. And I think I have all that I need for this question. So the idea here is, if I look at the question stem, we have this super job and it has a certain consumption of direct costs. And I'm asking you to compare normal ABC and approximated ABC. One, one way in which I torture you, I'm sorry, uh, assess you on this quiz is, oh, can you do these two things? And now I've got not just 10 steps you have to do, but 20 steps you have to do right. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know that's, that's kind of the idea. Stack, let's stack things on top of each other and see if you can, A, conceptually navigate where these things go, and, and B, complete all the steps accurately. And those, those two seem... If you can do those two, that seems to be a decent measure of, uh, of having, of knowing, of knowledge about the topic. All right, so if we go up here, we have activity cost pools already set up for us and the drivers associated with it. I don't think I, I don't name any of the drivers. They're just the driver that goes with this activity cost pool and the driver that goes with this activity cost pool. So the budgeted quantities are here in the parentheses for each of these drivers. And then the super job consumes a certain amount of each of those drivers. So if we're in normal or standard ABC mode, we can create rates from the top table, not a table, but you know, like a table. And then we can multiply those rates by the cost driver consumed. And we have our overhead costs for super job. That's normal ABC. We're, we're, we're probably pretty okay with that. And we can go do that. Let's, let's not just talk about it. Let's go do it. Yeah, no, that's not. Where is my... I have it open, don't I? Ah, there it is. Too many windows. All right, so this is super job. Now I'll move it here and I'll make this bold and underline. There we go. Don't, don't expect me always to be consistent in how I organize these things. Uh, as long as the idea is getting through, I'm, I'm largely satisfied. I'm not necessarily a great fit in some ways for accounting. Tends, accounting tends to select people who are especially 
uh, good at attention to detail. That's a strength of theirs. Uh, some of you will think I'm kind of a slob. I'm sorry, because I'm not quite up to that level of attention to detail. And sometimes I'm just throwing things on the spreadsheet. As long as it seems to make sense, I'm happy with it. If it's not making sense to you, let me know. I mean, if it's unclear, I'm happy to change it and improve it. If you've got an improvement to make. So we have 50,000. I, I don't think we can copy any of these things over very easily. NumLock is what we need to do. 50,000, 6,500, 112,000. I'm just reading this right here, the non-parentheticals right here. And 1,900. Uh, and then we have our budgeted cost drivers, 10,000. I'm in the parentheses. 2,500, 15,000, 1,150. And we can calculate activity rates by dividing these two. Yep. And we got these nasty activity rates, but I'm going to leave them nasty. Uh, and then, well, let's just, uh, we're, we're on a roll, so let's, let's keep moving right. And we have our I'll leave them, do it again, if I can. There we go. Uh, let, me, let me label some things. Budget cost driver, budget activity pool, cost pools. And this is cost driver consumed. Yeah, I better write that out. And now I feel bad about going to the right, so I'm going to go ahead and change that up. I'm going to go ahead and just take it over here. All right, so now I'm going to copy down this second set of data. 150, ooh, 150, 109, 15, 94. So I can multiply these rates. Just, I just, these rates are just copied from here. <clears throat> I should be correct with my labeling when I do label. These are activity rates next to me. And this is cost driver consumed. All right, so now everything sits. This is the same thing as this. I just want to keep it all on the screen without having to mess around with too much. I can multiply those rates. So we're charging the super job $5 for every whatever this driver is that's consumed. And there are 150 of it consumed by Superjob, so we're going to charge it $750 for the pre-planning activity. So out of this $50,000 of activity cost pool, we're kind of allocating 750 of that to the Superjob. <clears throat> well, effectively. So we have the sum of these, and I think it got the right one. Good, it got those four. The sum of those four activities give us our overhead costs for the Superjob. 500 is our direct costs. Direct costs, and we can sum overhead and direct costs to give us total cost under ABC, the normal or standard ABC. Okay. Now it gets a little bit different. I'll grab both of it. When we're doing some approximated ABC. We start with the same information right here, and we will use the same information here, but the calculation of activity rates is going to be different because we've got to let nature take its course and let the big cost pools eat the little cost pools before we start developing activity rates. <clears throat> so the two that are obviously larger, this one is a whole order of magnitude larger. This is two orders of magnitude larger. We have six digits, this one, five digits here, and the other two are only four digits. So clearly these are the low dollar ones. Let's see, how can I organize this and look less like a slob now that I've said it, it's in everybody's head. No dollar cost pools. No, 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 Google, you're wrong. I want specifically that bad boy and that bad boy. Okay, high dollar cost pools. And I want the other two. Okay, I'll need those two. <clears throat> In fact, let me go ahead and, and take those two. Uh, 
not going to need those yet, so I'm going to move this down. What I want is I want to get the percentages here. So that 50000 in for the pre-planning activity cost pool is a certain percentage of the total high dollar cost pool amount here. Looks like it's, no, 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 30%, which decimal form gets 0.30. Oh, well, 31% in rounds two. Okay, and I could do the same thing because I pushed F4, which made, put a dollar signs in, made it absolute. I can copy that over to here, and it's now taking the 112,000 over that 162,000 absolute cell reference. So now we have 69,000. The two will sum to 100, sums to one. Great. That's 100% we're talking about. So <clears throat> now we can multiply these percents in decimal form here by the low dollar cost pool. And I'll make that absolute, an absolute cell reference. Uh, so this is the amount that the pre-planning cost pool eats of the little cost pools, low dollar cost pools. And this is how much the execution, uh, execution can be cost pool of 112,000. It eats 69% of that 8,400, excuse me, which is 5,807. So we just add those in. Now this is the activity cost pool and I'll bring those down. That equals that now. And that equals that. I'm just copying them down. And I really only care about those, those two for activity rates. The whole idea is to avoid having to track more cost drivers than we have to. So we only want to calculate activity rates and track the cost driver consumption of the big cost pools. <clears throat> so these are our new activity rates. Great, now we're gonna go ahead and grab this right here. Mm, that didn't work so well. And I want this here. Let's try and make it try and make it mirror what we did up ahead, up above. See how in normal ABC we said, let's copy the activity rates down, multiply by cost over consumed to get the overhead, and we did some calculations here. So let's go ahead and actually see if we can't cheat the system a little bit and just copy all that down. Let's see if it worked. Uh, here we have our approximate ABC activity rate for pre-planning, one of the big cost pools, times the cost over consumed for that. Good. And of course, it doesn't matter how much is consumed here, but I have it here. It's multiplied by zero equals zero. Good. That works out. Uh, we have the execution consumption of 15 times the execution activity rate of 7.85, giving us $117.8. And we've summed them. Yeah, that, that works out. Same direct costs. Uh, and now we're adding those direct costs plus the overhead. And so now we can change that name to approximate ABC, or approximate ABC. And so we're trying to compare these two numbers right here. A gentle yellow there. Uh, those two. So how much do they differ by? They differ by $394. And I, I did it so normal subtracted from approximated. So normal is allocating $394 more than than appro approximated. So I don't. I didn't see uh, this. This person took a screenshot. I didn't see the the answer choices. I think the answer choices probably say this amount for normal ABC and this amount for approximated ABC, and they should match these two numbers right here. Sometimes it's phrased of which is true, and it has the difference between the two. There are a few questions in there that ask about you to, ask you to compare normal and approximated to, to show you that there's a difference. There is a, they, they, we are losing some detail. We're, we're losing $394 worth of detail. This is, it's literally off. If we'd done normal ABC, we have more drivers. We've done the cost study that, that puts, puts all these costs across these different, these different uh, drivers here. <clears throat> and we've decided to summarize, getting rid of some of that specificity, that, that granularity, and that pushes our overhead number by $394, which pushes our, our total let me circle, let me indicate the right one. Pushes the overhead number down by $394. It's down here now in approximate ABC instead of up here, which was the normal ABC. 
And then with the direct costs of 500, that means it brings down the total costs down here as well by the same amount. By the same amount. All right, and this gets a little, a little harsher. Uh, unsure of answer choice layout. So you can hit Shift F2 to put in a comment if you want, just like F2 puts you into the cell, in normal Excel anyway. Uh, okay, yeah, Jeff. Can you go back up a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. right where you're at, the, the far right number. So you, I know you, you took the percentages and then you multiplied it by the lower two uh, option numbers. Uh, yeah, so um, right here, then, okay, right here. You add them, you add them with the, uh, so are you multiplying both percentages by both of the lower values or are you just doing, you're just multiplying them by the total of the lowers added together? I think the second one, if I understand the question right. Uh, we've got this percentage we're multiplying it by, by the total here in, in both cases. And then we're, we're adding them, yeah, yeah. No problem. Sorry, when I was side here, well, something, I did something and I think I got it. Oh, and I did this. So if I get rid of that, it shows the formula bar again. Okay, great. Okay. That look okay? So it'd be great to double check this. If this if this question comes up in a, a, a poll from the quiz, let's check to see if these answer choices are are correct, and we'll we'll, we'll test it directly. <clears throat> All right. So the next one, TDABC. Okay. So, so let's shift some gears. That's what gear shifting sounds like. And now we got to go away from approximated ABC to TD ABC. So this question looks like, uh, this question stem says, what is the overhead cost of the Mikasa job using TD ABC? Just a random name I picked. You know, not, not, not anything about any of the greatest cultural achievements of the recent history or anything. No, 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 nothing, nothing like that. Uh, I, I kid, I kid. Uh, what is the overhead cost of the Mikasa job using TD ABC? And we're going to round the final answer to two decimal places if necessary. And it doesn't look like any of the answer choices would require rounding, but it's there. So the overhead cost. We don't need to worry about the direct costs. So we can ignore the, that $500 for the Mikasa job. <clears throat> and we're just going to look at, let's see, we've got a capacity cost rate already. So if you remember TDABC, it has those three steps. Calculate capacity cost rate. Uh, multiply CCR by time on uh, constraint. It's not quite the right word, I think. I don't, it's not the same word I used. It's, it's a fine word. Um, per activity. That yields activity rates. And then we Allocate based on the activity rates. Nice and easy. Great. <clears throat> so we have a TDABC, or excuse me, we have the CCR already of $100. Where do the calculations required for that? And I've told you the hours. Uh, the this is the doctor hour is is our our constrained capacity or our, our key capacity that we're worried about. <clears throat> and looks like per direct labor hour. 0.15 direct doctor hours are consumed, and per machine hour, 0.25 doctor hours are consumed. So let's put some of those numbers in. We have CCR, uh, we have now 0 0.15 and 0 0.25. This is doctor hour per direct labor hour. This is doctor hour per machine hour. So let's go ahead and multiply. I'm going to make that absolute because I'm going to multiply it by both of these, and I'm just going to drag down if I could learn to use arrows. 
So this is our activity rate for direct labor hours. This is our activity rate for machine hours. And, and I don't have names for these activities, but each activity cost pool, each activity centers around a driver. That's, that's its whole purpose for being, is that it, it, it is a nexus for overhead costs that are correlated with cost responsibility through a driver that we can trace to jobs, orders, or product units. And so I don't, I don't really need the name of the activity or the name of the activity cost pool. I just need to know that's the driver. That's what we're trying to correlate it through. No driver, no activity cost pool. Or it's an activity cost pool that's like the other category. That's a period cost, can't, can't allocate. Great. They consume. Just happens to be the same number. Oh, almost the same numbers. So this is our, our DLH consumed by the job. This is our machine hours consumed by the job. We can multiply. $15 activity rate times those 15 direct labor hours consumed. And... $25 activity rate per machine hour and 20 machine hours consumed. We should be getting, did I get it right? Nope. I just want those two. That should be our total overhead cost, which it matches up. I wanted to click it. It matches up with one of the answer choices. Let me double check, make sure I'm not missing something. Start with CCR. We've got the hours per uh, CCR hours per uh, drivers. Gives us the driver activity rates. We've got the cost ever consumed. We've got these two. This is the amount allocated for the first activity cost pool. Amount allocated for the second activity cost pool. From the second activity cost pool. So yeah, total overhead cost should be seven twenty-five. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, questions on that one? Questions on that one? <clears throat> the, the simplification of the process, I think, is a little clearer uh, in terms of simpler questions with TD ABC than with approximated ABC on your end as a student doing contrived questions about these things. Uh, TD ABC has, has a, a relatively simplified, if you get the terms right, relatively simplified process compared to standard ABC. Approximated ABC is an extra step you're doing on top of normal ABC, but the actual execution in practice is simpler because you're tracking fewer cost drivers. It's not simpler for you on the test, but it is simpler for the company who is now tracking fewer cost drivers. Great. Did I mix those up? Maybe. Aha. 15 machine hours. Let's see. And 20 direct labor hours. My guess is that I, when I created the problem, problem and the answer choices, I solved it the same way I read it just now. So what I need to do is I need to go switch the, the I fix this, this question. That's a good point. Because yeah, when I when I do it the way it's actually written, uh, I don't get one of the answer choices. This may be why this question was sent to me. Hey, you got a boo-boo on this question in a very nice way. Was was maybe what was being said. Because this is not one of the answer choices, is it? No, it's not. <clears throat> All right, well, let me let me take a look at this question here. Um, best way. All right, I'll put notes on this so people reviewing the slides can see. I'm going to leave it like this. That's why this, this, this particular answer choice is, is right. I'll either um, update the answer choices or change the question somehow and get that updated. All right, good, good, good eye. Thank you. Other questions on this? Other mistakes I've made? Come on. It's a roast now. No, no, it's not. Please don't. Okay. 
All right, so the old corporation, let's see, what's the old corporation? If a job consumes 100 direct labor hours and five setups, which of the following is true? All right, this one is asking us to compare normal and TDABZ. Normal ABC and TDABZ, or normal or standard. I'm going to use those two interchangeably, it's fine. So the old corporation uses ABC and wants to use TDABC. Under normal ABC, the firm uses the following activity rates. Oh, look, I've already given you activity rates. Great, $91 per direct labor hour and $200.5 per setup. As the firm is looking at TDABC, it calculates activity rates of $100 per direct labor hour and $175 per setup. Okay, so I've also uh, started here for you. So I went all the way through the process of normal ABC till activity rates, and now I've gone all the way through the TDABC process till activity rates, which is just two steps, but let's pretend it's a lot of work I did for you. And I'm giving you two different sets of rates it's pretty straightforward what we're going to do. We're going to do second stage allocation. It's the same no matter what we're doing. If a job consumes a driver, we're going to charge it the rate associated with that driver. So let's go, let's look at this question. Let's see how many, let's see if I can get this one. If I got this one right. You know, after going through so many dozens of questions, you know, they start to blur together. I make mistakes and abbreviations in what I'm reading. <clears throat> So this is TDABC problem two, we'll call it. And I will highlight problem one here. How about that one? A little different than the usual highlighting. So we have two sets of rates, 91 and 200.5. This is under normal ABC. This is our per direct labor hour. This is per setup. So to set up some sort of workspace or set up some sort of machine and overhead, some overhead costs seem to be driven by the process of setting things up. Maybe setting up the workspace requires a lot of cleaning costs. So we pushed our janitorial hours cost and said we're going to drive that by setups or a lot of the associated costs with that because you know, it just takes a lot to clean up our workspace. I'm actually going to move it this way so I can do calculations out to the right a little bit. Now I want to copy those. And I'm going to add another row. This is approximated ABC. Per direct labor hour, we have $100. And per setup, we have $175. Not, no, not approximated. It's TD ABC. Excuse me. There we go. Now, the job consumes 100 direct labor hours and five setups. The actual consumption doesn't di differ based on our ABC modality. So we're going to keep that the same and multiply across. Copy. And do that in both instances. And we can sum. It looks like it's got it right. We can sum those two here and sum those two here. And this one is phrased the difference between the two. So that difference is clearly 772.5 instead of 16.5. Assuming I did that math right, let's double check that. Uh, don't trust me. OK, good. So assuming I've assigned the right answer choice, it's another mistake that can be made when you're going through like dozens of questions and whatnot. We have TDABC assigning $772.5 more than normal ABC. So that would be this one right here. Normal ABC estimates the job's overhead as 772.5 less than TD ABC. I think that makes sense to me as the, as the answer choice. Is that all right? I hope, I hope one of the takeaways from the fact that this kind of question exists on 5-2 is you, you see it as a positive thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he has so little to test us on on this one that he has to throw in shenanigans like this. I'll compare the two. <clears throat> oh, oh, but I, I guess I'm trying to drill, drill home the fact that um, we have this big long chapter five and chapter and, and quiz 5 2 focuses on f section 5.5, which is the very last section of of the chapter. So these two little add-ons, they, they do, they, they're worth their own quiz. 
but I think once you, I think, I think the, the ability to gain knowledge about that area is, is, is very clustered. So you, you, you hit TDABC, you'll probably gain a lot of knowledge that opens up a lot of different questions on the quiz to you. So hopefully that's good for your, your study habits. All right, this question here came, uh, this is, this is another person who, who wrote this in. So this kind of question here, and I don't have the question stem on it. But it is, it, it, it's clearly a setup of approximated ABC here from a normal ABC setup. So I'm going to assume that we're trying to develop either activity cost pools using approximate ABC or activity rates using approximate ABC. So this is very similar to our setup up here, way up here, where we've got like normal ABC and we're going to, and four of them, uh, right, four activities. I've named them weird. This is part of the question that might have might have been one of the reasons this question was was sent to me. Um, they look like regions, and you're like, what, what is going on? I, 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 okay, don't try to get in the mind of me racing to get new questions generated. I start to scrape the bottom of the barrel. This is supposed to be the western activity, the eastern activity, the northern activity, and the southern activity. All right? Make your, your desired regional joke about whatever the Western activity is or the Eastern activity or what do they do in the South? What's the Southern activity? You know, okay, it's fine. <clears throat> They're weird names. I get that. And the point is, uh, the, the small, tiny, little micro point I'm trying to make with that is that uh, the name really doesn't matter. The, the type of activity doesn't matter as far as the math is concerned. The, the actual process, it could be named Blarg. It doesn't matter. The point is, it is supposed to represent the co-location, the nexus of a correlation between overhead cost responsibility and a cost driver we can, we can trace to product units or jobs or orders. All right, so we're going we're gonna to treat it like this. We're going to do, we're going to do first stage allocation. Uh, ah, ah, it's, it's, it's a little unlike this question we did before because I gave you the activity cost pools. We got to come up with these numbers. That's, that's what this, portion of the problem is. And then we've got to divide whatever we come up with from this by these numbers right here, which is similar to this, to get activity rates. So it might be asking for normal activity-based costing. We go, we'll go do that. It's just a couple extra cells, not too hard. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do approximate ABC, where we let the big ones eat the little ones, uh, and, and life will find a way. So approx ABC First stage allocation question, I believe. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I can't copy anything over, so I'm going to do a lot of typing here. Maintenance costs, one million. Admin costs, 1.5 million. Power costs, 800,000. And then we have maintenance, admin, power. I'll just call up. And we have, I guess I didn't need that just yet. I'm gonna reconstruct the percentage table here. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So let's do a check figure here. 100%. Good. Okay, good. I'll uh, double check that. All right. All right, now let's make the column absolute. Hit F4 three times. We want that million dollars to be applied across the four regions right here. Oh, and the other. And we should be able to get those down to all three of our types of overhead costs. Let's go ahead and just make this full screen for now.
Great. Let's let's just do another check figure as I'm being insecure here. All these costs should equal the same thing. Good. Okay, we've just taken these costs and split them up into the different categories. So these are our activity cost pools. I'm going to get rid of the check figures. No, I'm going to move this down so I can label it. Activity cost pools. Great. Okay, so under normal ABC, this question is asking us what is something about first stage allocation under normal ABC. It's going to take us a couple cells. Copy these over. Not too hard. Let's double check, make sure we're not losing too much information. Okay, we yeah, we had a we had a some decimals here and here. <clears throat> Great. So under normal ABC, these would be our activity rates. Uh, I'm assuming the question is asking something about what about under approximated ABC. Under approximated ABC, uh, let's go ahead and just kind of create. We'll create a new kind of sit situation, and then we'll copy down from the the columns. Well, you'll see what I mean. We're gonna we're gonna label like low dollar cost pools, and we're gonna sum the two. Let's see which ones are the small ones. We've got. Uh, these two. They're, they're smaller uh, by a noticeable degree. Maybe a little less, less noticeable than most of the times, but there's, there's a clear gap right there. And then these two are the high dollar cost pools. Great. So we have a couple things here. We're going to take these two and get our percentages. So these are our two high dollar cost pools. What color to high dollar? They get green, yeah, high dollar. These are our two low dollar cost pools. And I don't know, gray? Yeah. I was just gonna ask, so let's say you have multiple activity cost pools, let's say six, mm -hmm. and then a two is the highest. Like if you're saying just significant figures of six, then Let's say you have like a nine 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 hundred thousand, another nine 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 hundred thousand, and then you have hundred thousand. Would you still consider that a hundred thousand to be a part of the high dollar or the low dollar? Are you? I'm just trying to figure out how you consider a high dollar and low dollar in. Like in, in reality and practice. Yeah. Uh, so I think the scenario you said is like one that has five nines versus one that's just a hundred thousand, like a dollar extra. Is that what you said? Okay, okay, okay. Um, what, what, the, uh, what you're going to want to do, uh, you know, as far as... Are you looking at the top 5% model? Even super high? Top line? The ultimate answer to the question, really, I'm not sure it makes... It's, it's entirely driven by the size. So yes, the, the big ones are going to be the ones you pick versus the little ones. But where do you put the cutoff? What if there's like a, a big stratification where there are some bigger ones and then like some medium ones and then some little ones? So really easy case for the little ones. I'm kind of extrapolating on your question, but I think it helps answer the question. The little ones are obvious. Well, those are, those are small ones, low dollar cost pools. The big ones, yeah, that's obvious. But like what if there's like a sort of medium big one? What about the medium medium one? What, where's, where's the cutoff point? And what you're going to want to do is Maybe it wasn't as contrived as I was making it to be, comparing normal versus approximate ABC and getting the idea of how much does it change our estimate? Because that's going to tell us whether it's going to change our decision making. We're adopting an ABC system in general because it's going to make, help us make better choices. We, we know more about the profitability of our jobs and our orders so we can price more competitively against com competitors. We can decide whether process improvements and when we compare them are, are, are better or worse. And it just makes us more profitable over time. Well, if we lose a lot of that granularity, depending on where we put that threshold, then, then it's not worth it approximately. We might as well just go back to an old job order costing system. And, and so where you set it exactly is going gonna, is gonna to depend on how much, how much decision-making power you're bleeding out of the, the ABC system. So I would generally, just my gut feeling is you want to 
pick it basically the, the biggest ones you want, the, the, the biggest ones, and then anything below that, even if there are medium, medium high, that's just my gut, my gut feeling that it'll be okay to, to do that. But my gut feeling might be wrong if, let's say, there are two that are really big, and there's a third one that's like almost as big. If that third one captures something really important that differentiates product line A, B, and C, then I'm losing line of sight significantly on how profitable A, B, and C are comparatively when I get rid of that third cost driver. That, that is, is going to be a lot of decision-making power. Like my example of the batches on the small candy bars versus the big candy bars, what if that third one's batches? And now I can't make good decisions between small and large candy bars because those big two cost drivers are eating up all of the, the differentiation that was in that third cost driver because I approximated it. And that's, if there's a real easy gap, it's an easy question. If there's less of a big gap, it's a harder question. You probably need to do some, some trial and error um, in, in, the, in the system, some, some mathematical trial and error. I'm not saying try it one way and see, how, see if you, you, go, you go out of business after a quarter. I mean, go look at some past decisions you've made and see, well, if we approximated just to the top two, would we have made the same decision? Would we have realized that this, this job over here actually was unprofitable? Or would we have lost line of sight of that? So you know, see if see see whether or not it how it affects your decisions. I guess is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's a kind of a complicated answer I gave. I don't know if it was a simpler question than I was than than, than, than I was making it out to be. Okay. Good. 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 Uh, all right. So so I want the two largest cost pools, and we don't include the other category. I put it in the instructions here in this particular example. Uh, and well, that's good because there's a lot of other stuff going on here, but I want you to ignore it. I, I, I say not to include it. <clears throat> in the questions, in the questions, the answer is always, I'm going to tell you which ones are the big ones or, or tell you how many big ones to include. And I try to make them decently stratified. All right, so we have the big dollar cost pools. They sum to 1.88 million. That's here and that's here. And they divide up into 55% for the, what is this, Western activity? Yeah, Western activity. And 44% of ish of the of the 1.88 million is from the eastern activity. So we're going to let them eat the north and the south in those proportions. So I've made absolute the low dollar cost pools because I want both of them to eat from that trough. But I've made relative the the cell that's going to tell me the percent that we're going for, and I'll just multiply that out. Now this should sum. Yep, we've got all. Low dollar cost pools, they're all eaten up, not even scraps. I'm sorry, I'm really milking this eating each other thing. I'm sorry if that brings back night terrors from Jurassic Park or something. That's sorry. <clears throat> but it seems like it, it 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 works conceptually and it'll be a good memory kludge. You know, one of those things that you're like, oh, that was that's really distinctive to think about, and it helps me cue the memory, which is gonna help me get the question right. So I'm willing to be a little goofy on that front. But anyway, yeah, this is the, the it looks like we've got all, all the, the scraps eaten up by the two. And so now we can add those in. Not just your original size, you also added some size here uh, from eating the little ones. So now we have Western Activity is 1,266,809. One Eastern Activity is 1,023,191. And we can now divide those numbers by our cost drivers for those, our uh, activity, budget activity drivers for those two, 20,000 and 90,000. So let me label some things here. This is so this is uh, new. And this is new activity rates. Okay. I'll leave that as it is. All right, questions on this one? I think it exhausts the question that was sent to me. Jack, question on 5-1, right? Right? Yeah, question number two. 
Okay. I can also like give you, I have this, but I can give you numbers. Let's say we pull one up, if it's the same. Garden view, garden view. This is the same setup, let's see. Is it asking for job DD? Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. Hey, you know, the, the odds are in our favor here. All right, so uh, question Sim says, using activity-based activity -based costing, what is the unit cost for job DD? I'm going to round two decimal places if necessary. It looks like we might need to. We'll see. <clears throat> so the unit cost, we have job DD here. Uh, looks like we have, in job DD, they, they ordered 160 units. Uh, and they have, they've consumed this is the amount of direct labor hours, this number of setups, this number of orders, this number of machine hours, this number of kilowatt hours. Uh, and they've consumed this $1,000 of direct materials, $1,200 of direct labor. So what we need to do is we need to take out... Um, we need to figure out the costs, overall cost of job DDD, and we'll end up dividing that by the number of units in job DD. I said DDD earlier, and I was like, job DD. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we'll also need to, to take these numbers here and transform them into activity rates so we can multiply by the cost driver consumption right, right here. So let's go ahead and, and stop talking about it and start doing it here. So now we have, this is, uh, again, the new incorporated. I think that's a weird Spanish-Italian mixture, I, or French mixture of, again, don't try and think too hard about what I made up when I was making up questions. Just, it's <clears throat> trying to entertain myself sometimes. Uh, job, DD unit cost, question. So I think I can copy some things over. We're not in a picture anymore. Maybe it'll work. Awesome. Okay, and maybe we can copy this one down too. Oh, great. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab activity rates because it's this table's first. So this activity of setup, the setup activity uses setups as activity driver. Well, that sounds pretty logical. It budgets the overall activity cost pool at $100,000. That's going to be our numerator divided by the budgeted activity driver of 500, giving us $200 per setup as the, the charge we're going to make. Great, that's our activity driver. Oh, let's give ourselves a few more decimal places because it's 25 cents here, not $0. Same thing with orders, $12.50 per order. Same thing with machine hours, $50 per machine hour and 25 cents per kilowatt hour. All right, so job DD here. Uh, I'll copy over the direct costs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply our rates by the consumption from job DD. So that should work. I'll scoot over a little bit. So we have setups. Uh, we should be charging $200 per setup. We consumed five setup, or four setups excuse me, in job DD. So we have $800 of cost from the setup activity that job DD is responsible for. And continue on down, we have orders, ends up being 6250 once we multiply that 5 by that 12.5. <clears throat> Machine hours at 25 times that 50 gives us 1250. And then kilowatt hours, 50 times the 25 cents per kilowatt hour gives us $12.50. We sum all these costs up. Oh, it got it for me. Good. Now we have the total cost for job DD, or cost of job DD. Now there are 160 units. That's already here. That should be our unit cost. It's probably... Let's check to see if there are decimal places missing here. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. I got some red herrings in there, like the direct labor hours thing. Yeah, I was, when I was doing that, I was thinking of like, oh, you have to figure out unit before you figure out total, but you do total before you like, Yeah. I was getting a little confused. No, no worries. Yes, that's, that's, that's like uh, my, that's, that's, our, that's my, the coda to 
to, to this kind of problem. I can add this little, little tiny thing onto the end uh, of not just overhead, not just total cost, but uh, what's the unit cost? Because this job has a number of units that were it, so uh, that were in there. So how much we charge per unit, or how much does it cost us per unit, which will help decide how much we should charge per unit. Great. Well, we we've spent a lot of time here doing these questions. We're all a little older now. Okay. Uh, went over a lot on 5-2 stuff. I think we got good coverage of, uh, I'm not sure I, I can think of something that I want us to cover in 5-2. <clears throat> so let me make sure I have noted that I'm going to make a fix to this problem. And I'd like, all right, here's, here's what 5-2 problem fix. Here's what I would, I would, I would kind of love to do here. Start in chapter six stuff. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the key is all those overhead costs. Some of the questions list a bunch of costs and only some of them are overhead costs. So for example, if it says, if I say there such and such cost is traced directly to units or directly to patients or whatever, that's one setup, for example, like one setup is nursing hours and medicine use is traced directly to patients. Those are direct costs. We're, we're tracing those directly. So they wouldn't be an overhead and they're not going to be ones that we we need to allocate with the CCR to activity rates to to that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not not the patient management software. Is there another category that has more direct? Relationship to medicine? medicine is there med th those two categories? That yeah. If it says if it says that nurse time and medicine use are traced directly to patients, then then the two. I tried to make it so they're close enough corresponding. The medicine costs and the nurse salaries, those two direct things. Yeah, the their overhead costs. Then yeah, yeah, we don't trace those directly. No, no, that's supposed to be more general than that. Yeah, peripheral supplies supplies would be would be, I don't know, mi miscellaneous stuff. We're in a nurse's office. What is that? The little thing they put around your arm when they're drawing blood. Sorry if I made somebody feel like fainting there just by mentioning the word. Uh, yeah, a, that's supposed to be peripheral supplies. Yeah, no, no not me not medicine. <laughs> yeah, usually I try to make my wording as direct as possible and not have you interpret things. I aired a little more on the side of, I want you to connect those dots on that particular style of question. Good, good you asked it though. Then we, we cleared that up. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's my classroom, so I get to do what I want. That's what they told me. I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic there. But I, I do think it'd be good to get a head start on some chapter six stuff. Because technically we start that next next week. And we're catching up. We are doing that. We still have 5-2 due Tuesday. So if you really have 5-2 questions, you can email me between now and Monday, or we can cover some questions Monday. Like, there's no law against that. We can start talking about process costing in Chapter 6 and also cover a couple of 5-2 questions Monday. That's fine. <clears throat> so process costing. Now, let's actually go way back here. When we started talking about job order costing, the idea of absorption costing, and the importance of it, and my silly gravestone with Ed, and we never covered that in class, but it's in there. And we said, look, the easiest thing to do would just be to divide the costs by unit. And we stopped right there. We're like, no, what's that? I think I've already referenced it once. That one meme where like the guy's turning onto the exit ramp at the last possible moment, actually illegally onto pass through the what's called the gore area of the the exit. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's not good. We, we, sorry, the driving's not good. But we said, no, 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 no. We can't do this. We can't just divide overhead by number of units. That's not nearly 
detailed enough and granular enough to let us know how much this job or this order is costing us. And in chapter four and chapter five, that was true because we start, we we're basically under the idea that we have somewhat customized or differentiated or diversified products or jobs or orders. And so, yeah, we need, we need that information to make good decisions. But what if, what if we don't? What if like a marble is a marble is a marble is a marble and we're in the, bar the marble business? Like, we don't need to name them. We'll go crazy. They're like a million marbles on the conveyor belt. They're all the same. So yeah, we should just divide overhead by units. And that's process, that's process costing chapter six. Now make it sound really, really easy. And looking back, you know, speaking of getting older, when you have matured in six weeks and we're done with chapter six, you'll be like, yeah, I guess, you know, it's pretty easy. It's okay. But the path to get there, sometimes it, this can frustrate people sometimes. <clears throat> it starts innocently enough, right? We're just trying to get overhead per unit. We just want to do that thing we said we were going to do back in chapter four and not like go crazy off the, inter the exit ramp, but to go straight on the highway. We're, just, we're, we're trying to just stay the course this time because we don't need the information to differentiate jobs or orders. They're all marbles. They're all the same. <clears throat> so uh, what is it? Deciding each unit's responsibility for overhead costs down to the micro penny is a waste in that situation. If all the product units are the same, they probably have the same level of responsibility for overhead costs. Or at the very least, tracking any unique responsibility among the different marbles is not worth the cost. So <clears throat> this is the basic idea. Okay, I put it in mathematical form just so to point out the basic idea. This is not what you do in process costing. Don't worry, I have the note there. Please don't turn to chapter six and say, I saw the equation there, therefore I'm gonna solve the problem using this. No, you'll get it wrong. This is the overall architecture of what we're doing. <clears throat> There's some problems that we run into with this, with trying to execute this sort of thing. The first one, units and ending work in process inventory. So, <clears throat> The marble example or other mass production where examples where they're all homogenous units where process costing would be a good fit often have continuous production. Like they're, they're not, they're not just creating something and it's done before the end of the period. And so there's nothing in work in process. They're very susceptible to having significant balances of units in work in process at the end of the period. Cause there's just, it's just a continuous process that they're doing in the factory. So yeah, there's some, there's some in process at midnight, at the end of the month, midnight today. The, the, the 31st. <clears throat> so we have units, we likely have units in ending work and process inventory, but they're not done yet. They're not like a full unit. They're like partway done. So if we just do total units here and include them, we're kind of like overcounting how much work we did. We didn't finish these ones. They've got a fraction of the work done so far. If we exclude them, then we're undercounting how much work we did. Uh, no. Plenty of companies look at process costing and say, we don't really care. And they don't include this. They just say, we're not going to factor in ending work in process. Uh, they take this complication. They say, we're going to ignore it. We're not going to in this class because I want you to know how to do it when we account for the fact that there's, there are partial units ending work in process so that then you can decide whether or not you want to, to lose the granularity of, of, uh, of accounting for the fact that there are partial units in, in process. <clears throat> so what we do is we create equivalent units. Equivalent unit just means a unit times a percent complete. So the idea here is we worked hard all month and now we have 100 units in any work in process and they're 50% complete. So we're gonna have them count for 100 times 0.5 units, which ends up being 50 units. If you want to translate that into normal English, the idea is we're saying, all right, we have some like of our work left in ending work in process. And if we had concentrated that work, instead of doing half a job of a hundred units, and instead concentrated that work on the units we could finish, we would have finished 50 units. That's what it ends up being. 
We could have had 50 complete units if we had not dispersed our work, is the idea. I think, I think that works okay as an articulation of what we're doing. So I usually, when I'm saying it, if I get myself clear, if I'm not being, being confusing or I'm not uh, otherwise making uh, it harder for you to understand, sometimes I misspeak, I get that, uh, I'm contrasting equivalent units versus physical units. So unit here means physical units. So the physical units that are in any, any work in process, that was 100 in my example, times the percent complete, which is 50%. So the equivalent units in any work in process in that, in that example is 50 units. Okay. So we can, we, can, we can use that. And we can now say we have a total equivalent units of our completed units. Right, so let's expand that example a little bit before we get there. Let's say we worked really hard. We completed 10,000 units. And we have 100 ending work in process units. EWIP is going to be very common as a, an abbreviation in the class here at 50% complete. So we're saying, look, these are completed. So complete is like, is 90% complete? Is 10% complete? What's, what's, what percent is complete? 100%. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Maybe it sounds a little obvious here. So in terms of equivalent units, these are 10,000 units times one. So physical units equals equivalent units when we're talking about them being completed. So our total equivalent units, I'm saying here, is our completed units, which is technically the completed physical units times their 100% completion rate. So now, now we have how many equivalent units there are, which is the same as the physical units. Okay. <clears throat> Time, pl or plus, excuse me, ending whip units times a percent complete. So our TEU in this case is 10,000 plus 100 times 0 0.5. I know the brackets in that are not mathematically required. I'm trying to get you physically to understand, uh, to, to, to visually understand these terms and how they're separated. They represent like two different classes of equivalent units we're talking about. Okay, so it would be 10,050 is our total equivalent units. So we could put that in the denominator instead. Okay, we, we, great, we solved the problem. That complication, we solved it. So we're going to do total overhead cost over total equivalent units. All right. And I do an example here. Great, good for me. Second complication. That lovely term you use every day in your, in your speech there, non-uniform comp consumption of product costs. Yeah, it just, just rolls off the tongue. <clears throat> All right, so here is the problem. Let's, let's, consider, uh, let's consider those marbles, the 100 of them that are not complete by the end of the period. What goes into a marble? Ever, anybody made, ever made a marble? Okay, good, because I haven't either, and I don't know much about it. But I'm imagining, so I don't, I, you know, I don't want to be trumped by somebody who's like, I'm a marble connoisseur. I know all about it. Okay. I, the general gist, I'm assuming, is you get a piece of glass or plastic to a, a heat that is malleable, and it gets extruded or formed into a sphere and polished or whatever. Yeah, polished and, 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 and perfected. <laughs> Let's assume they're just nice marbles. This is clear. Just forget about any filling or coloring or anything like that. We're real cheapo marbles. Okay, well, those hundred that are like half complete, what does it mean to be half complete for a marble? Like, does it have half the glass? Like, it's, it's like dripping out of the extruder? Like, it's not, oh, it's not that, uh, if you shook the extruder, like, like fall off? What? Probably not. I think halfway done, probably we're talking about the glass is already in a circle on the conveyor belt, hasn't been polished yet, probably not cooled yet. That's kind of the idea. <clears throat> Our product costs, I'll come back to that, just keep that in mind. Our product costs have three different categories. Oh, last class was pretty board happy. 
Direct material. Oh, I want to write that in different order. Direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Sometimes we categorize them, we group them like this. And we call direct materials, direct materials. Yeah, just for variety. And we call direct labor and overhead conversion costs. Because what we're doing is we're taking some raw material, we're doing something to it, and out pops a finished good. We've converted it from raw material to finished good. What do we do to it? Well, we apply labor and whatever overhead costs we have, like the machine, the equipment, whatever. So as far as materials are concerned, that marble's probably got all the glass it's ever going to have. So it might be actually 100% complete with respect to materials. But we haven't yet finished it up. We still have labor and overhead to apply to it. We still got people or machines that have to polish it, that have to cool it off. So maybe the 50% complete is actually the conversion costs. So we don't just need to figure out percent completes to get equivalent units. We need to do that for two different numbers with respect to direct materials and with respect to conversion costs. Oh. So the total equivalent units with respect to direct materials in this example here is 1,000 times excuse me, 10,000 times one, so just 10,000, plus the 100 units times 100% complete, because they're all the way done with respect to direct materials. They got all the glass they're ever going to have. They're complete with respect to direct materials. So that's 10,100 that's going to go in the denominator for our direct materials cost. I made one jump that I'm going to come back to and make sure I get before 415 strikes. Our conversion cost follows this calculation, 100 times 0.5 plus 10,000 is there. So that's our TEU, total equivalent units, with respect to conversion costs. This is our TEU with respect to direct materials. I jumped right into all product costs, didn't I? Well, guess what? If we've got, if we don't, if we're not going to get value out of tracking overhead costs, we probably won't get value tracking direct materials either. Like you're not, you're not weighing each marble. You're not, you're not figuring out what, how many picoseconds your workers work on each little marco, what marble going across the assembly line either. So let's just take all the product costs and divvy them out on a, on a, on a per unit basis. And now, okay, well, we need to figure out different TEUs for the different, different total equivalent units for the different styles of, of product costs. And now it's 415. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to chapter six. We'll finish the last complication, which is like not too much to, to add. Uh, and start talking about the actual equations you use doing, to do process costing. And we'll go over any 5-2 questions you, you have.